Hi, I'm Kathy from Quilt Beginnings in Dublin, Ohio, and I'd like to take you on a journey of how I created this beautiful Bargello behind me. I love Bargellos, and they look so complicated, but they're really easy. So let's see how I did it. When I see fabric like this that has the whole color spectrum, I think how beautiful they would be if they were all in the same quilt together. Bargello gives you all the drama, but it's actually really easy to piece. So the first thing you need is a jelly roll. And actually this quilt is gonna be two jelly rolls. We have one right here. It's one, there's 42 different um, two and a half inch strips in this jelly roll, and they're graduated actually very much like we are right here. So you want to put them in a pleasing order. And this is how they presented them in the um, jelly roll. So we just reassembled our bolts to be the exact same way. The two and a half inch strips, however many strips you have, is how long your quilt's going to be times two. So if you have 42 strips, you're going to end up with a quilt that's 84 inches long. So you can decide how big or how small do you want your quilt to be just by determining the number of strips that you use. I want to use them all, so I'm going to have a quilt that's 80 inches long. The first thing we do is we open up our jelly roll and we sew all of our strips together. So I'm going to just open this up and show you, starting at one end of the spectrum. And we're going to just come all the way to the other end. And we'll just slide this back and forth for you so you can see the whole spectrum. That's actually going to be the length of my quilt because once I go to subcut, they'll be going the other direction. This is step one. One thing I want to tell you when you're doing it is you do want to make sure that your salvages are pretty close to lined up even. So you can see that they're all relatively even because if the other end, you can see the strips aren't the same. Let me flip it over for you. The strips are not the same length. And so there's some staggering that goes on. And you don't want them to all stagger because um, it shortens up the amount of usable fabric you have when you're all put together. So make one side even, let the other side stagger. The other thing as I, I do is I press all my seams in the same direction. I'm gonna make two strip sets of all 42 fabrics. So I will have a total of 84 strips sewn together in two different sets. One of the strip sets I'm gonna press all this direction, the second strip set I'm going to press all the opposite direction. Then what happens when I go to sew my rows together, everything will nest perfectly. All right, I better go get sewing. Okay, now we have two strip sets sewn together that are exactly the same, keeping the fabrics all in the same order. The only difference between the two sets is one strip set is pressed one direction, so this one goes to the right, and this one is pressed the opposite direction to the left. When we cut our strip sets apart, this will be able to allow our seams to nest perfectly when we join our two strips together. Um, we have one last thing to do before we're ready to start cutting. That's to take this end of our fabric, take it all the way down to the other end, and we're gonna sew the fabric into a tube like this. So we're gonna do a final seam of sewing the two ends together. We'll do that for both of our strip sets and continue, um, and then we'll go to cut. All right, so we're ready to go to the cutting station. I like to cut one of my strip sets at a time because doing both of them at the same time is gonna be really unwieldy. These things are pretty big. This is a circular now, it's, every seam is sewn together, so I went ahead and put it, there's my final seam between the two, so it makes a big circle. I like to stagger it so that um, a little bit of the seam is showing so that the seams don't end up nesting, on, don't lay on top of each other when I go to cut. So I just fold it down a little bit, gonna lay it flat, then I'm gonna bring the other side, it's still way too big for my cutting mat, so I'm gonna bring it up, and again, I wanna offset those seams so that they're not stacking on top of each other. So I just, I'm gonna smooth it out really nice and square. You ready? This is the scary part. Um, and then we're going to start cutting. So the way that we cut this is really, really simple. The math on this quilt is super simple. It goes from one inch to three and a half inches in quarter inch increments. So we're going to start at one inch, then one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, two, two and a quarter, two and a half, all the way up to three and a half. Then we'll start counting back down. Three and a quarter, 
three, two and three quarters, you get it. So it's going to be a circle. We'll get almost a full repetition on each of our panels and we're going to continue. If we end up at two on this one, then we'll start at one and three quarters on the other panel because um, we want to get the full wave effect and you're going to see how beautiful it's going to turn out in just a little bit. Okay, when we're ready to line it up on our mat, I definitely use the mat and my ruler to keep myself really squared up to my strip sets. I take the top edge of my strip set and line it up along a line on my mat where I can still see the numbers above. I make sure this whole side, I'm going to cut off in one inch is going to be my starting place. I want to make sure all those seam allowances or salvages are over the one inch line. So make sure that you're not leaving some salvage tucked up underneath because that first strip set needs the full use of the fabric, no salvage. And I'm going to do a clean cut. So I put the edge of my ruler on top of the one inch line here, my one inch line there. I have my strip set square here and my strip set square to my mat there. I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm going to cut well, here we go. Okay, now I'm clean. Now I'm going to start with my one inch, then one and a quarter, then one and a half, and I'll go ahead and just start. I use the one inch line on my ruler, and I use the grid on my mat to give me one inch. It's a skinny one. The next one's going to be one and a quarter. So I'm going to lay the one and a quarter line, and I don't know if you can see this, but I lay it right on the cut I just made. And then I can also use the lines on my mat to make sure that I'm exactly where I need to be. There's one and a quarter. My next one is one and a half. So I'm gonna put the half inch line on the line that I just cut. And I'm gonna keep going up until I get all the way to the end. Okay, I've got a lot of my cuts cut, but I'm actually to the end where I'm running off my mat and I need to shift my fabric. Before I do that, I really recommend getting these Merrily's numbered pens. They are awesome. And what I did was I just put a, a pen in order of each of the different strip sizes. So you can see they're getting wider. They're just going out two and a half, two and three quarters, three, three and a quarter, three and a half, et cetera, and then back down. I'm gonna lift these all up, keeping them in order. We haven't uh, done anything with pulling seams apart yet. That's gonna be the next fun. Um, and I'm gonna shift my fabric and continue cutting. Okay, so I finished cutting my first stack, which is stacked right here. And now I've laid out my second stack with all the seams pressed the opposite direction. And I continued where I finished. So I didn't finish um, all the way back down to one. It took me three more cuts to get back to my one inch square. So I went ahead and labeled those 18, 19, and 20 to finish up um, that first set of all the way up to three and all the way back down to one. And then I put a one pin at the one inch um, when I with the second strip set. Now I'm going to intermingle the two strip sets. So I'm going to take my one and leave it here and I'm going to swap the two from the original one because the seams are going the opposite direction. So every even number out of here I'm going to pull out and I'm going to replace it with the even number from here. So this will be one from this set, three, five, seven, and I'm going to put in its place two, four, six, etc. from this strip set. They'll just flip rolls. That will keep my seams going in opposite directions. So here I've laid out all my strip sets in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, all the way across my quilt. And now is where the magic really starts to begin. Okay, so now we're ready to start pulling apart our strips and lining them up on a design wall. It's really helpful if you have a design wall at your house, but if you don't, you can use your floor. These strips are really long. They're 80 inches long, 84 inches, because I have 42 fabrics. So they're really, really long when they're opened up. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna start at our number one, and we're gonna pull out, we're gonna pick where in our long chain we wanna divide the first one. Then we're gonna rotate the fabric up one for two, up one more for three, up one more for four. So now let me just grab five and I will show you. Here's my stack of five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna pull five off the top and it's not split yet, it's still sewed in a tube. I'm gonna bring it over next to four and four's color is this orange, so I need to take it up one more to here. So I'm gonna pull out the seam between these two oranges. Trusty seam ripper. Pull out the seam. 
takes just a second. Ripping is not as fun as sewing, but you do want to use a seam ripper on this. You don't want to just pull them apart because things tend to go awry when you do that. And I'm going to put this one up and I'm going to put my pen back in so I keep track. These pens are priceless for this project. I would not do it without it. Um, it's so easy to lose track of where you are. But you can see the pattern is starting to occur. Let me do one more. There's six. Again, it's still sewed, sewed in a um, ring. I'm going to bring it up. I just put this orange is at the top, so I want one more. So I'm going to cut it between these two oranges. And each time I'm going to just rotate up one more, one more square, and it's going to form an amazing design because we staggered our cuts from one inch to three and a half inches and back down using quarter inch increments. I think I'll start sewing. So here we are. I've got all my strips pulled apart now. Look at how pretty they are. It's definitely starting to look like a quilt. We're just about ready to sew. I'm going to give you a couple little tips and trips for that, and then we're really close to finishing up our quilt. Okay, now that our strip sets are all laid out, we want to make sure that we keep our numbers associated with each strip set. It's going to make it so much easier when you go to the sewing machine to keep track of where you are. They all start looking the same after a while. Um, normally what we do is we put, we always flip from right to left. This is strip number four, this is strip number one, two, and three. But if I put four on top, my even on top, and I go to line it up, all my seams are going up, which means that as I'm sewing, I'm hitting each one of them with my sewing machine um, foot, and it wants to flip the seams. So I did grunt through that with sewing two to one, but I decided by going ahead and attaching my third strip to number two, now when I flip five to four, the seams are gonna be going in the right direction for me, and they'll continue to do that as I go all the way across. At one point where I change my strip sets, I may have to one more time um, sew an extra one on, but always make sure that the seams are going not up when you're approaching the sewing machine, but down. It's a lot easier. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. I have strip four and five because I've already sewn one, two, and three together to get my seam allowances running the right direction. And I'm not worried about the tail ends of my um, strips. They can do whatever they want. I just want to worry about this little area that's leading into the sewing machine because we want to make sure that every single seam matches. I am not a big believer in pens, especially with a project like this. There's so much shifting and flex in your seams. I don't want to be tugging and pulling, but I do want to nest every single one of these. So the good news is, now my seams are headed in the right direction because I sewed that extra strip to my first strip set. So this one, the back one is all going up and the top one is all going down. So you can see that they're going to nest really nicely together. I'm going to put a stiletto there. I'm going to go ahead and take that pen out just so I don't cut myself. I'm going to put my presser foot down and then I just worry about the next seam coming up. So here I am and I want to make sure my fabrics are right together and I'm going to do my scant quarter and I'm going to look at the next one and you can see how much easier it is when the seams are going in the right direction. The next one I just keep lining it up, holding it with the stylus. So we're not speed sewing like we could with our strip sets. Putting it together, if it needs, if one strip is slightly a different width than the other, you want to make sure that you ease that in. You don't want to have um, accumulate slippage in your seam. Keep going. You can see this is a tiny bit of fullness on my top one. Either the strip sets weren't cut exactly the same or my seam allowance was slightly different. This one happened to have flipped. I got it ironed the wrong direction, so I'm going to flip it back the way I want um, because I like them when they butt against each other. You can see it. And there we go. Oh, I used my finger instead of a stylus. Okay, I'm going to carry on all the way to the end. Okay, I finished showing my very long strip. They're so pretty though, um, together. And now it's time to iron it. And I just wanted to give you a couple of hints about that as well. We don't want to inject any bowing into our quilt. We want to make sure that it stays nice and square. So we want to stay really square on our ironing board. We don't want to be pushing it into a curve like this. So we're going to stay square. Whoops, I'll put this back up on the ironing board. Let's just let it kind of rest up there. But I like to open it 
and then let my fingernail walk a little bit along those seam. I'm gonna put my iron down, and then I'm gonna keep opening ahead of myself and staying square so I'm not arcing at all when I'm doing the iron. I'm letting the iron do the work of opening that seam up for me. I'm gonna just keep coming down. Oop, caught on my cord. It's nice to use a cordless iron at home. I'm at the shop and I didn't grab a cordless iron, but if you have one, love it. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. And you see how I'm just keeping everything nice and square. Keeps coming off. Just letting my fingers help direct it. Almost to the end. There we go. We're ready, ready to put it back up into our Brigello. And this is my four and my five. And I would just keep going with pairs all the way across, then take my pairs do the next set, and pretty soon your whole quilt's going to be together. Okay, so we've gotten to the end. All our strips got sewn back together. We got it quilted and bound, and our journey is complete. I hope you have a great time making your own Bargellos, and I'd love for you to bring them in and show them to us. We'll see you soon.